Hey, Joseph59 here to show you guys how to make this cutting board with a beveled edge. And you can download a free set of plans. of my extra pieces that I had extra from the cutoffs and I just wanted some smaller pieces but I didn't want to take this big nice chunk of maple that's just a little shy of one inch and plane it down. Uh, this is a really great technique if you have bigger pieces and you just want to take the board and simply rip it in half. So all you need to do to start off with is roughly make a small mark in the middle of your piece and then a small mark on the inside or outside line and you just want to set the blade height just roughly in the middle which I have done so here and then you just want to set your table saw just roughly to the carbide tips of your saw blade that's just roughly um, in the in between the middle of the line So I gathered up all my wood and I just played around with the pattern and this is the pattern that I came up with and I'm really satisfied with it. I think it makes all the woods combined pop. Uh, all the woods that I'm using for this project is cherry, maple, and purple heart. When you're gluing up, you always gotta remember that you gotta watch how the grain direction goes because you want a flat, stable board. You don't want a board that will eventually curve. So the rule of thumb is you look at how the grain direction is going and I usually just like to use my pencil to first see which way the grain direction is going and the pattern that you want to always have is up, down, up, down pattern. So the pattern that I have is up, down, up, down, up, down, up. The type of glue that I'm using is a waterproof glue and I am using Tie Bond 3. You want to make sure that it is a food grade safe glue. I make sure I put glue on both sides in the middle. 
I just got my last piece here and I'm just gonna apply glue on it. And I just simply use my finger. I don't use any fancy tools or anything like that. And I just wanna make sure that you've got a good amount on here. And you do wanna work a little bit fast. There we go. And I also like to make sure that I keep one side nice and square. Just makes it easier when you're cutting off later on excess. You only have one side that you would waste a lot more than so much on both sides. So when you're tightening your clamps, you just slowly want to bring them into each other. might shift a little bit and then what I like to do is start just a little bit in the middle put a little bit of pressure and then on the edges just a little bit and as you can see here you're getting nice beads of glue coming out and that's what you want also as well like I said some of it will shift but as long as you can try to keep one side up one side square and just keep tightening a little bit as you go. And you just wanna to check too to make sure the glue is not pushing your board up. So if we need to put any, apply any pressure, you can always back off a little bit and then tighten it back up again. And I think we're pretty much good here. And then I also like to put clamps on top also as well, just to get even pressure as well. Tighten that up as well. And you just wanna tighten up your clamps, not like fully overturn it, turn it, cause you don't wanna put too much pressure on your pieces of wood either, otherwise you will get warpage. You wanna come back in 30 minutes to scrape off any excess glue you have, and then I usually like to let this dry in the clamps overnight. Once you take your wood out of the clamps, I always like to use a hand scraper just to scrape off any excess glue. on your cutting board, I set my saw up to 30 degrees. I also provided the template. I find just take one of the scrap pieces that you had excess off from your boards, trace the angle on. That way that's a little bit easier to see, uh, for me that is. Then once you have it all traced out, you want to use your miter gauge and you want to put your fence further away. You do not want your piece and miter gauge touching at the same time for safety reasons. Now just ignore that part because I have my saw ready set up to go uh, for the fence, so just ignore that part. The fence would be further away. First thing I find is easier to do to get to your actual bevel is just because it's on angle, it's a little harder to, to see. So what I tend to do is take my scrap piece that I have and slowly move it over and over and over till I get that angle. And once I get that complete angle, then what I tend to do what you want to do next is take your piece that you have, move your fence now back close to the piece so that it is touching the blade, as you can see here. Once you have it in position, lock down your fence, remove your miter gauge, 
And now we are ready to cut our bevel ledge. For sanding down all the corners, I just used 400 grit sandpaper. The type of finish you want to use is a food graded safe finish and I am using Waco's Butcher Block oil finish. I applied three coats on the bottom already and I like to do the bottom first just in case if I get any drips while I'm doing the edges or the top. It's just a little bit easier to wipe off the surface. So when you're adding your finish, you just want to go in your grain direction if possible, especially on top. And as you kind of can see here, it's really neat just to see how the grains uh, pull out. And I'm going to go ahead and finish the sides and the top. And you want to make sure that you apply three coats, but do follow your instructions of the product that you are using. This product suggests that I wait six hours before recoating, and on the second coat, sand with 400 and grit sandpaper so that your last surface that you apply the finish, it'll be nice and smooth. I'm applying some bumpers to the bottom of the cutting board. I purchased these at Lee Valley. I believe they are three quarter inches wide by a quarter inches high. And you want to make sure you pre-drill your wood because you don't want your wood to split or crack. I'm just using a 564 drill bit and obviously you just want to drill a little bit, not too deep. And the screw that I am using is a number six by half inch long and a stainless steel screw. You want to use a stainless steel screw that way then it will not rust because it will have some contact with water. And you don't want to over tighten it. You just want to go ahead and get it nice and snug and that is it. Thanks for stopping by my channel and go to the video description link below for free plants. Don't forget to comment on this video. If you would like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.